So you might have seen recently from this very spot, a seven year old called Leo comfortably flopping it over my head towards this hole. It was impressive, but it got me thinking, I can't do that. I used to be much more confident with flop shots, but now that confidence is low. So I found a club, which I think is gonna definitely help me hit that ridiculous flop shot. And it's this. So this is it, the H7 Hummingbird. And it looks, to some degree, like a somewhat of a normal wedge. There's a couple of big differences. First off, it's lofted. This club has 70 degrees of loft. To put that into perspective, my normal lob wedge is 60 degrees. This is 10 degrees stronger, which is crazy. It's got a massive club face, and it's got this kind of strip down the middle to help you square it off. The idea is you shouldn't have to open the face. You should be able to set up square, swing it, and it pops up, i.e. like a hummingbird. So I'm gonna test this wedge on a few different situations, but then I'm finally gonna try the shot that Leo tried from this very spot to this very hole. Can I flop it confidently up in the air over six foot minimum? Find out to the end of the video to see if I can achieve that. First, this wedge also says it's very good out the bunkers. So let's start there. Right, so I'm gonna hit this wedge out of the bunker, this 70 degree lob wedge. Apparently this is where it's gonna be really good. Bunkers and lob shots. Now normally, if I'm using my 60 degree wedge, I've gotta open the face, I've gotta open my body, I've gotta swing across it. But apparently, don't need to do that with this. I can just aim square. Don't have to do anything different with my body. Aim square, swing, square, so it's dead straight to target, and the ball should pop out. Let's see if that's the case. Bank to get over. There's actually not a flag in the hole, so I've actually just put one, one of my other wedges in the hole. I just need to aim straight and swing straight. Now, this is my first ever shot with this club, the 70 degree lob wedge. No idea how it's gonna react. Oh, that wasn't bad. That was exactly what it said I should do. Aim square, swing square. It felt different to normal, de definitely, but it's produced an okay shot. Let's try it again. Oh, that's crazy. Very similar outcome, almost right next to it. Take a little bit off this next one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. One of the things that really kind of shocks me so far is the size of the face. It's absolutely gigantic. And actually, sometimes when you do open a face, let's say of my normal lob wedge, the head will start to look a little bit smaller. The sweet spot is slightly harder to hit. But that's not the case with this. Let's go two more. Aim square, swing dead straight and just hit the sand. Take those last two every day. <laughs> Honestly, that seemed easy. That seemed very, very simple to just aim straight, swing straight. It took me a couple to get kind of used to how fast I've got to swing it. The first two went just past the flag. But what was impressive for me, if you just come around here for a second, one thing that I definitely struggle with on bunker shots is I'm pretty good at judging distance normally, but I don't always get the line correct. This is the angle I was hitting the ball from. Look how much of a straight line those balls are in because I didn't need to swing differently. I just swung straight. That was good. I was impressed with that. You know what I'm really interested in next? Before we hit that crazy flop shot in a minute, I wanna see what happens if I hit this as hard as I can. What does a 70 degree lob wedge do on my launch monitor? Let's go and find out. Okay, so we've just come up to the practice tee here on the short game area at the Marriott Worsley Park. It's in pristine condition, actually. I'm gonna hit some shots on GC Quad. I'm gonna start off with my 60 degree wedge 
and then move into the 70 degree wedge just to see if there's well how much of a difference there is the green's 100 yards away so i'm not going to reach that from here but let's start with the 60 degree first and then see how far or how short that club goes when i hit it full out as hard as i can let's start off with 60 my own 60 degree lob wedge first Okay, so that's me hitting my lob wedge as hard as I can, not actually finishing the water. I can hit it as far as I can. What's that one? So 75 yards on average for those two shots. That's me hitting it as hard as I possibly can. And it is going really high. Hopefully you can see it on the tracer. Let's move into the 70 degree next. This is gonna go ridiculously high. Okay, next up, the hummingbird, the massive head. 70 degree let's hit it as hard as i possibly can and imagine this is just going to go literally straight up in the air <laughs> oh my goodness that's ridiculous that has gone i mean not far at all it said on here it carried 33 yards i have hit that as hard as i can that club slid underneath the golf ball Weirdly enough, there's not loads of backspin on that. Like three, actually it's measuring at 3000 RPM backspin. So it's not the spin that's getting up in the air. It's literally just hitting the club and just going up. And then as it lands, it just drops down. It's not actually creating loads of backspin. Let's have another go at that, that's crazy. That's gone a little bit further, but again, just straight up. So that one went 50 yards. In preparation for this flop shot challenge in a minute, let me just see if I can really get the club sliding underneath the ball here. I might even open the face up a little bit just to add even more loft into a shot like this. That's only just gone off the practice tee. 23 yards and I'm hitting it as hard as I possibly can. It is going straight up. Unfortunately, I'm not getting a peak height on this launch monitor here, but I mean, that is just going straight up in the air. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna go one more. Let's see if I can, let's see how far I could hit it. Could I squeeze it out over 50 yards? Uh, the answer to that is no. That's gone a grand total of 40 three yards me hitting it as hard as i can possibly swing it i'm swinging at about 85 miles per hour there hitting that shot and it's only going 43 yards in the air unbelievable next test let's see what this club can do when it comes to the flop shot i've got a funny feeling it's going to do pretty well so as I'm just picking these balls up, which by the way, have literally just finished here and the practice tee is just up there. I've not really talked about much of the wedge. I saw it on a Facebook advert actually, and someone tagged me in it. And I bought two of them. I bought the 70 degree and the 58 degree. I think it cost me about $200 from the USA. The advert, like a lot of these things, are very, very much over the top, promising you the world, promising you're gonna be the next Phil Mickelson. There's a bit of a kind of truth in that with this club. It does have benefits. I've seen that definitely in the bunker. And at the end of the day, if you make a 70 degree lofted wedge, it's going to pop up in the air easier than another particular type of lob wedge. It's not bad, but again, for $100 a club, I mean, it's not that great. The other thing is like what, if you were to put a club like this in the bag, what would you take out of the bag? Like, is there a 60 degree lob wedge you could take out of the bag? I mean, if you could, if you could have 15 clubs in your bag, I would see this going in a lot of players' bags because I do think for maybe once or twice around, you might need a club like this, but not very often at all. Right, anyway, let's get to the flop shot. So on that note of $100 as well, after just hitting it, the few shots I've hit so far, it has marked and scratched a little bit. And even the paintwork off the hummingbird at the bottom has actually slightly come off. However, there's one feature on this club that I'd actually like to see a little bit more with some other clubs. This kind of stripe straight down the middle of the club face. Aesthetically, it's fantastic for lining up. I really like that. I'd actually like to see something 
Similar to that on other brands as well. I'm a big fan of that on the face. I think that's going to help. That would help a lot of golfers line the club up a lot straighter. So we are stood now in exactly the same spot that little Leo, little seven-year-old Leo was stood here, hitting flop shots over my head. I was stood about here, so I'm six foot tall, and stood about here towards that flag, which we've now replaced with a golf club. I mean, how good is that? How confident was Leo hitting it, just flopping it over me? I'm not as confident. Will this club give me that confidence? Let's do a few tests first. Let's see if I can flop it from here to that flag with a 70 degree lob wedge. <laughs> it almost, the flag looks too close. Oh, nice. Um, if somebody was stood there, then that would have seriously hurt. And just very quickly, there's a group on that green. And honestly, if it was another five yards further, I would have hit them. And that green's probably about 60 yards away. Not a great start. So the first one filled me with confidence and the second one killed my confidence. Let's hopefully I can get that confidence back. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that was unbelievable. Oh, no, that would have uh, that would have injured somebody in the face as well. So, so far on a shot like this, when I'm trying to hit a flop shot from this close, I'm having mixed success. Around 50% of the time I play it perfectly. 50% of the time it's terrible. Now, it's all well and good when there's nobody here. But what happens when... I've got some pressure. What happens when I've got to flop it over this guy? You right, Rick? You ready for this? Okay. Guys, if you enjoy this video, make sure you smash like, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's see if I can flop it over myself from this range. Easy. <laughs> Thank goodness. We'll see you next time.